Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stacey Stanislaw, and I'm the Communications Manager for the Drexel Libraries. I want to thank you for joining us for this afternoon's webinar, Incorporating Archival Material in Your Curriculum. This session is part of the library's fall webinar series called Building Connections to Scholarship. The event series includes over 15 sessions that focus on tools and systems that the libraries provides to help our Drexel Dragons with their research. You'll find all the details about this series on our website, and I'll add the link to the chat box in just a second. We only have three more webinars before the end of the year, and I hope you'll consider attending them. Now, before I turn it over to Simon, I want to run through a few logistics. First, please keep yourselves muted during the presentation. If you have any questions, please type them in chat, and we'll answer them at the end of the talk. Next, I do want to note that we're, we are recording this session, and I'll post the video on the library's YouTube channel later today. I will also send everyone an email with a link to the video and a link to a very short survey. We would really love your feedback about this session. That's it for me. And now without further ado, I'll turn it over to Simon. Thanks, Simon. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. One second. All right, so. Um, I'm Simon Ragavan. I'm the Archives Technician uh, at the Drexel University Archives, um, and so welcome to the webinar. Thanks for attending. Um, and uh, so, uh, to start with, archives are not just for history majors. Um, uh, students from uh, across uh, academic disciplines and aiming for many different careers can uh, benefit from studying and interpreting archival material as a way to develop skills. Uh, that are broadly useful. So in this presentation, instead of discussing how the archival material um, in the Drexel University Archives collections can be used to learn about specific subjects, I'm going to focus on the skills you can help your students develop by incorporating archival material from our collections and from other archives as well into your curricula. Uh, I'm going to note for people who view this as a recording in the future that I am delivering this webinar in October 2020, uh, and the information in this presentation is not static since we are actively developing how we approach uh, teaching with primary sources. Um, so what is an archives? Just to make sure we're on the same page, I'm, I'm going to give you a quick definition of archives. An archives is where material of enduring historic value is stored and made accessible to researchers. So in practice, this means mostly paper and photographs, um, and these days, born digital records as well. Um, and uh, this material can be created by organizations, families, or individuals. So the Drexel University Archives primarily collects material created by, uh, you know, um, Drexel University administration, faculty, staff, students, alumni, um, and our material, uh, this material going back to Drexel's founding in 1891. And we also have material created by and about the Drexel family. So for more information about what archives are uh, and an introduction to how to do research in them, you could watch the recording of another webinar I presented not long ago, also part of the series, called Using Archives, uh, an Introduction to Archival Research, and um, uh, Stacy will drop the link to that webinar in the chat. Um, so uh, I'm gonna give you all some context to what I and my colleagues in the Drexel University Archives are working on and explain uh, why we're looking for collaboration from among Drexel faculty. So academic librarians have already developed best practices for instruction as you may have noticed in working with Drexel library staff. However, however, this is not the case in the archival field. And on top of that, archivists are most often working with faculty and students in, in history and humanities departments. Um, uh, when I was doing research in professional literature, I found scarcely any examples of archivists who have worked with faculty in STEM or in the arts. Uh, while I think this should change generally, it really needs to be a focus for us at Drexel um, because so many students are in various STEM programs or, are, or they attend Westfall. Another thing that I think is useful for you to know is that archivists aren't usually subject specialists. We're experts at organizing archival material and at helping people find material that is useful to them. Um, and uh, most archivists have backgrounds in history or the humanities, and this is the case with all current uh, Drexel, Drexel University archive staff. What this means is that you as faculty with expertise in many different fields and lots of experience teaching are going to see all kinds of pedagogical potential and material where we won't. Um, and in addition, um, uh, to begin the process of developing best practices for teaching with primary sources, we're also figuring out how to do this entirely online, uh, which is not something that archivists were doing before the pandemic. 
Um, so what all this means is that it, what we're doing is, is, is very innovative. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's very in keeping with Drexel history. Um, and I, I'm sure of that because I work in the archives and also with Drexel's current character to, to kind of um, uh, be innovative and experiment with different ways of, of doing things. Um, but the thing is that, uh, that archive staff, we can't really um, uh, figure out the full potential of archival material um, and how to teach with it without working with faculty members. Um, so what are some of the skills that students can develop with archival material? Um, the ones I'm gonna discuss aren't the only ones by any mean, means, and they, they often overlap, but um, the purpose of this presentation isn't to be definitive or exhaustive. It's to kind of throw out some of the ideas that we have so far um, to make you a little familiar with some of the collections in, in, our, in, our, in the archives and hopefully to get you curious and to get you thinking about how archival material might fit into classes that you already teach or about how to modify or create new classes that are designed around the use of archival material. Okay, so uh, the first skill I'm gonna, I'm gonna discuss a little bit is visual literacy. Uh, and what I mean by this is, well, one way of defining it is um, an understanding of the history, conventions, and technology of still and moving images and the ability to analyze and interpret them. But I'll add, um, I also think part of this is knowing how to use and create visual media as well. Um, our world is saturated with images and we communicate with them a great deal. Um, so I'm going to give you a few examples of how um, Drexel University Archives material can be used in fairly concrete ways, um, especially for students who are studying design and the arts. Um, so Drexel has had classes on how to make and design clothing from the very start. And we have lots of photos from different eras documenting student work. These two photos are each part of a series um, of photos for senior fashion so shows. So students, so, um, students showing kind of their, the culmination of their work. Um, and one photo is from 1940 and the other uh, here is from 1976. Um, and we have photos of senior fashion shows um, for, for uh, quite a number of different years. Um, we also have lots of photos of students doing all sorts of things um, and they can be used in a vast number of ways. Um, one thing is that they show what students were wearing in casual so social contexts um, as well as formal social events. Uh, and these could, could be compared to the senior fashion shows from similar years. And so one of the photos here is from 1978 and the other is from 1955. Um, and then uh, graphic design. Um, uh, what you're seeing here on the left is the cover for promotional pamphlet created by Drexel, um, I guess the predecessor for university communications um, from around 1965. And the, the, on the right is a page from the 1965 Drexel yearbook. Um, there's all kinds of archival material that can be used for graphic design classes, um, such as the yearbooks and student design flyers and posters for events. For events. And we have this kind of material covering um, the entirety of Drexel's history going back to 1891. And that's just a few broad suggestions. Um, and the examples of archival material I'm showing you is really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we have in our collections. Um, Another skill is communication. So uh, when, you're, when you're interpreting an archival item, um, you're, you're thinking about who created the item, what they were trying to communicate, their intended audience, their biases and assumptions, uh, what they're not saying. Um, and so archival material is great for, for developing the skill of, an, of interpreting um, uh, what other people are saying. Um, and, uh, and, um, and some suggestions for uh, for how to use archival material to develop the skill um, for perhaps for some sort of writing intensive class um, would be to describe an item in great detail or to argue for or against the position of the creator of an item. Or um, one faculty member has, assigned has, um, has an assignment where students um, write the, bi the biography of an archival item. I'd also like to point out that if you use unique archival material as the basis for an assignment, then plagiarization is basically impossible um, because there are no cliff notes for our collections. Um, and, uh, and you can use a huge range of materials um, if you're asking students to think about the goal of the creator of the, an item, the intended audience, and so forth. 
Um, a couple examples. Um, so on the left, we have the cover of a 1960 promotional pamphlet aimed at businesses to get them interested in having Drexel co-op students. And on the right is a flyer created by WKDU, the student radio station in the late 1980s. Um, and so in both cases, they're, they're you know, trying to get people interested in something. Um, and and this, they also kind of demonstrate how visual literacy um, and, uh, and communication um, are, are very intertwined with some material. Um, another skill, dealing with uncertainty. Um, so archives definitely do not have all the records ever created. Um, there are many gaps and silences. Material is biased or ambiguous. Uh, sometimes essential information like who sent a letter or the date that a photo was taken may be missing and so on. And so an example in our own collections um, is, uh, so Harriet Worrell was a graduate of Drexel twice over. She got two different certificates, um, was the secretary to the president of Drexel for decades and ran the Alumni Associ Association for decades as well. And despite being deeply involved in Drexel for most of her life, if you search for her name, uh, in our internal database, then what you find is two thin folders. That's what we have, uh, uh, like with her name on it. Um, so to do archival research, a person needs to understand that historical records may never have existed, may not have survived, or may not have been collected. Um, and that the records that are available have been shaped by uh, individuals such as collectors, archivists, donors, um, in the case of Drexel, uh, various administrators and staff. So for example, it may have come down to if a secretary decided to keep some records or throw them out. Um, and knowing the history of the records themselves can be important to interpreting them. So when you're facing uncertainty because the information you, or data you have is incomplete or not reliable, how can you reduce the uncertainty? Can you find more information or corroborate what you have? Um, uh, and if you can't find more information or you don't have time, then what? Can you still achieve your goal? How do you pick a different goal? And this seems important in a lot of STEM subjects. And I think archival material can help students become more attuned to where there are gaps and ambiguities, um, more comfortable with uncertainty, and more skilled at dealing with it. So another skill is skepticism. Uh, just because it's published doesn't mean it's true. Um, and the thing with working with archival material and, um, is that students can really come to understand that all opinions and theories out there are based on the interpretation of data, of some sort of original document. Um, and so then they can be more aware that knowledge is produced and some insight into how it's produced. Um, one way of approaching this skill using Drexel University Archives material is through um, for example, uh, comparing the published memoirs of Drexel family members with other sources about them, such as the Society page newspaper clippings about the Drexel family. And because they're wealthy and influential um, and married into other wealthy and influential Philadelphia families, the newspapers treat them like celebrities, basically, so um, rather different from how they would have uh, presented themselves in a memoir. Um, and other examples, do we take promotional material and annual reports at face value or the yearbooks, which present the highlights of student life, but not the negative experiences? And so then in terms of career relevance, um, one thing that occurs to me is um, it can help students think critically about the best practices in their chosen field. Um, those be best practices didn't appear out of nowhere. They were developed over time. Uh, they aren't perfect and they will continue to change based on information. And when doing any sort of research, um, being able to question received wisdom and to recognize when people are making an assumption that isn't supported by data is essential. And just more generally, um, these days, everyone is slammed with information all the time. We can't take it all on face value. We have to have a, a certain amount of healthy skepticism um, when approaching information. Uh, another skill um, is uh, gathering and analyzing data. So archival material can provide practice at pulling quantitative and qualitative data from various kinds of records. Uh, and then using uh, that data to create information. So for example, you, um, students could look through the yearbooks to track the number of women graduating from various STEM programs at Drexel. Um, and also for many years, graduating seniors had their home addresses listed in the yearbook. Uh, and so students now could use that data to create visualizations for where graduating seniors came from, how that shifted over time, and then compare that to information about general demographic changes in those areas. Um, and this also supports the skill of skepticism and 
often require students to deal with uncertainty. So like I said, um, these skills um, overlap and support each other. Uh, another skill would be navigating online resources. Um, just because most current undergraduates don't remember a time when computers weren't ubiquitous, doesn't mean that they intuitively understand all things digital. Um, so there's lots of skills that people need to really be competent at finding the information they want online. Um, and working with archival material can be good practice for many of these skills. So for example, uh, part of doing archival research these days is using archives websites. So this includes um, looking through finding aids, which are guides to collections, um, actual digitized items, and archived websites. Um, and this is good practice for learning how to use different functions on a search interface. Um, and, uh, and because each archive has a different search interface, you get more practice the more you use. But basically, the more types of search, search interfaces you figure out how to use, the easier it becomes every time you encounter new ones. Um, and just kind of getting students beyond only, um, you can't find everything through Google, you know. Um, there's there's other, other avenues of finding information that they, that they need. Okay, so these are kind of, you know, throwing out some, some ideas that could be developed in different ways. Um, and, uh, but more concretely, how would this, how would this actually work? So um, right now in the archives, um, uh, archives staff are developing an Archives 101 lesson plan. Um, and it will be, it, you can, it can be delivered online. It could be synchronous, a synchronous class or asynchronous. Um, and at some point it will be uh, available as a, a in-person class visit to the reading room once you know uh, that's an option again. Um, and it can, it, it's a lesson plan that can be used pretty much as is, but, or we could tweak it to make it a better fit for a specific class. Um, but also we're really excited to collaborate with faculty to integrate archival material into their courses and to help them create new ones. Um, and this could mean we guest teach the Archives 101 lesson plan with a follow-up assignment based on archival material. It could mean shaping a course around using archival material for an entire quarter. Um, and we do ant anticipate creating more lesson plans, um, possibly, hopefully based on, uh, on the interests and needs of faculty. Um, and we can also incorporate material from other repositories, especially for online classes, um, uh, and, and just help faculty find uh, repositories, archives with, with material that's more relevant for what they're teaching. Um, so if students are studying architecture, uh, it could start with the Archives 101 lesson plan. Um, and then uh, students could work with uh, material in, in the Drexel University archives, or we could help students um, uh, identify other repositories in, in the, out there that have uh, either in, in Philadelphia, if we're back on campus, or, um, or online that have, um, uh, that have collections that relate to, um, to what their interest is. Um, so, um, there we go, um, stop sharing. Um, so that's what I, I um, that's kind of, you know, the, um, a summary of kind of like some of the, the things that we're thinking about doing and, and potential things. And um, so if anyone has any questions now, um, I'm happy to answer them. And if you, uh, want to know more about any of the photos or find out more about what we have in our collections or you have some sort of idea about how to how to um, how you might want to uh, incorporate um, archival material into a class then please get in touch with us at archives at drexel.edu.